The Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District provides the essential services of wastewater treatment to over 1 million residents across the greater Cleveland area. Treatment occurs at our three plants, Westerly, Easterly, and Southerly. In this video, you'll learn more about what happens within a treatment plant to take this to this. It's not a magic trick, it's careful engineering, chemistry, biology, and physics all working together to restore wastewater to clean water and discharge it safely back to the environment where it can be reused over and over again. So let's dive in. Welcome to the Southerly Wastewater Treatment Plant. Southerly is not only our biggest plant, but the largest wastewater treatment facility in Ohio, seeing average flows of 120 million gallons per day. All these tanks and facilities can be a bit confusing at first glance, so let's take a closer look at how it all works together. This is an overview of what we call the treatment train at Southerly. Treatment can be broken up into four major steps. Preliminary treatment, primary treatment, secondary treatment, and tertiary treatment. There are also two sides to these processes, wet processes and solids handling. Let's start right at the beginning with preliminary treatment. At Southerly, flow is received from a few different sources, residential, industrial, commercial, and combined sewer flows. All that flow is directed from throughout the service area to the plant through five interceptor sewers, which are like gigantic superhighways for flow. The five interceptors are called Big Creek, Cuyahoga Valley, Southerly, Mill Creek, and Southwest. Flow from these interceptors enters the plants through one of two junction chambers. In junction chamber one, Big Creek, Southerly, Mill Creek, and Southwest are routed through four different conduits so the flow can begin treatment. Junction Chamber 2 receives flow from the Cuyahoga Valley Interceptor, as well as the Southerly Septage Receiving Facility and the Easterly Sludge Force Main. These flows are routed to the plant through three different conduits. The seven conduits coming from the junction chambers are directed towards seven bar screens. A bar screen is a large panel with openings designed to catch rags, trash, and other debris that may be in wastewater. These items are caught on one side while the flow continues on through the other. A rake with metal teeth runs up and down the bar screen, scraping the caught debris off and onto a belt conveyor so that it can be collected and hauled to a landfill. Once through the bar screens, the flow continues to the aerated grit chambers. Wastewater can contain inert, inorganic material such as sand, gravel, glass, and other gritty materials that wear down pumps and other mechanical devices, or can cause clogs within the plant piping if not removed. Air is pumped into the grit tanks in a spiral rolling pattern. The air in the grit tank allows organic material to remain suspended in the wastewater, while the larger and heavier grit particles settle to the bottom of the tank. The air also helps pull off any organic material that may be clinging to the grit. The aeration at this step also helps reduce odors in the wastewater. The grit is removed from the tanks, and disposed in a landfill. The organic material that continues past the aerated grit tanks actually plays a role in helping the treatment process. We'll discuss that more later on. Once the flow is done at aerated grit, it's on to the next phase. Primary treatment. These are primary settling tanks, PST for short. At Southerly, we have 18 rectangular PSTs. PSTs are used to remove light organic suspended solids particles that are too small to be captured by the bar screens or in the aerated grit chambers. Have you ever seen a bottle of salad dressing in your refrigerator or at the grocery store that has separated out into different layers? The dressing has been sitting still for so long that the different parts of the mixture separate out based on their density. Larger particles like herbs and spices sit on the bottom, 
but lighter ingredients like oil sit on the top. If you were to add energy to the bottle by shaking it, everything would mix together again, and even the larger particles would become suspended in the mixture. A primary settling tank works in reverse of the salad dressing example. By slowing down the flow to a lower velocity, there's not enough energy in the flow to hold these solids in suspension, and so they settle down to the bottom of the tank. At the same time, any fats, oils, or grease that might be mixed into the flow can float up to the top. At both the top and bottom of these tanks, skimmers and scrapers move very slowly to collect material that has separated out from the rest of the flow. The oils at the top are called skimmings. The dense, settled particles are called primary sludge. Once removed from the PSTs, both skimmings and sludge enter the solids handling side of treatment. We'll come back to that in a bit, but for now, let's keep following the wet processes side. After a few hours of primary settling, the wastewater gently flows over sets of weirs and continues on to the next step of treatment, secondary treatment. While primary treatment relies on physics, the secondary treatment process relies on microbiology to provide treatment. Wastewater is filled with microorganisms that convert organic matter into gases and new microorganism cells. The goal of secondary treatment is to provide an environment that encourages this process and allows the microorganisms to grow in clumps large enough that they can be settled out of the flow. At Southerly, secondary treatment is broken into two phases, called first stage and second stage. The first step of first stage secondary treatment is aeration. Similar to the aerated grit, rows of diffusers at the bottom of the tank add air to the wastewater. However, at this stage, the air serves a different purpose. The types of microorganisms that can use the organic material in wastewater for energy can process better in an environment with plenty of oxygen. The air added to the water here in first stage, secondary aeration, helps the microorganisms do their job more efficiently. The water flows through multiple passes in the aeration tanks in order to give the microorganisms plenty of time to process the organic material. As they do their work, the microorganisms grow larger and the turbulent flow causes them to bump into and stick to each other. This process of clumping together is called flocculation. The flow, which at this point is called mixed liquor, heads into the first stage settling tanks. These tanks, also called clarifiers, function similar to the primary settling tanks. The mixed liquor is slowed down so that the microorganisms, which have grown bigger and heavier after flocculating in the aeration tank, can separate and fall down to the bottom of the tank. The flow then goes over weirs to continue on in the process. All those microorganisms that settled out of the water are referred to at this point as activated sludge. The activated sludge is collected from the bottom of the tanks with scrapers that have suction headers. But rather than being disposed of, most of the activated sludge is returned to the first stage aeration tanks, so the microorganisms can restart their cleaning work again. This is called return activated sludge. There will usually be more activated sludge produced than is necessary to be returned, so that excess is sent to the gravity thickeners. At Southerly, the second phase secondary treatment tanks are at a higher elevation than first phase, so the wastewater needs to be pumped and lifted up to those tanks. Six pumps work in rotation to pump flow from the low side to the high side of the plant. Once flow has been pumped, it enters the second stage aeration tanks. The second stage process is similar to first stage, but this time, slightly different types of microorganisms that use ammonia in the wastewater as their energy source are encouraged to grow. This process is called nitrification. If the ammonia wasn't removed, it would deplete the oxygen levels in the Cuyahoga River after discharge. Southerly has 10 second stage aeration tanks with three passes per tank. Once again, after the flow moves through the aeration tanks, it has a chance to settle out in the second stage settling tanks. 
These tanks have large return activated sludge pumps to reuse the activated sludge and a waste activated sludge system to remove any excess and use it elsewhere in the plant. After second stage secondary treatment, the flow is fully treated. It's time to disinfect it. Disinfection starts with a chemical called sodium hypochlorite, the same chemical found in household bleach. Sodium hypochlorite contains chlorine, a strong oxidizing agent that kills bacteria on contact. The flow heads for the chlorine contact tanks. 15 minutes of contact time in these tanks ensures that the chlorine can react with and neutralize any pathogens that may still be in the water. Another chemical called sodium bisulfite is added after the last pass of each chlorine contact tank. This is to neutralize any residual chlorine in the effluent prior to discharge. Disinfection occurs during the warmer recreational seasons of May through October. Finally, almost 24 hours after entering the treatment process, clean water is discharged from Southerly into the Cuyahoga River. Remember how in each step of treatment, solids or sludge was removed from the flow before continuing along in the process? All that removed material must be disposed of properly through a series of processes we call solids handling. Debris from the bar screens and grit chambers is taken to a landfill. That leaves the sludge from primary treatment and waste activated sludge. Sludge is a mixture of biosolid material and water. In fact, primary sludge is made up of only about 1% solid content and 99% water. Since sludge at Southerly will eventually be incinerated, it's important to remove as much of that water as possible. This occurs in the gravity thickeners, or GTs. Sludge from both primary settling and activated sludge is mixed together in the GTs. From there, the process is very similar to a regular settling tank. Larger particles settle out by gravity, while clearer water flows over weirs at the top of the tanks before being sent back within the plant for full treatment. Within the gravity thickeners, the solids content in the sludge increases to 3 or 4%. Once thickened and settled, the sludge is scraped off the bottom of the tank with a rotating arm and then pumped into the sludge storage tanks. These geodesic domes cover circular tanks that hold the sludge before it heads to the renewable energy facility, referred to as the REF. Sludge is not always processed at the REF at the same rate that it is generated by the treatment process, so it's important to have some place to put it. Southerly has six sludge storage tanks that can hold over six and a half million gallons of sludge. The renewable energy facility is an important feature of solids handling at the district. Within this building, sludge from Southerly and Easterly fuels an incineration process that ultimately can produce electricity. In order for the incineration process to be most efficient, the sludge first has to be further dewatered. To do that, the sludge first takes a spin in a dewatering centrifuge. The centrifuge spins the sludge very fast, kind of like a spinning carnival ride, exerting many Gs of force on the material. This force enhances the settling process and the water separates out, decreasing the total volume and increasing the percent solids. Additional polymer chemical is added at this step to help the solids flocculate even more. The centrifuges remove enough water to get the sludge to an average of 28% solids, just right for the incinerators. This is what the sludge looks like when it comes out of a centrifuge. At this point, the dewatered biosolids are referred to as sludge cake. The next step at REF is incineration, where we combust the biosolids. The incineration process ultimately produces electricity for the district, and it also produces a lot of ash. The ash is pumped to the ash lagoons just south of the plant where it slowly dries out before being removed. This ash can then be reused in soil blends, compost mixtures, or structural fill as part of our beneficial reuse program. And there you have it, 
wastewater treatment from beginning to end.